You think this is good? Welcome to a new well, episode. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to a new episode of Pong with Wadi and Karu. Yes. <laughs> Today is about uh, the regeneration of bone. The regeneration of bone. This is the second episode. Yeah. And this whole thing is, by the way, inspired by my foot, which I broke last Sunday doing sports. So we decided to dive deeper into the world of bone healing. Let's start with why does it break? The main causes for bone defects include trauma, bone tumors, degenerative diseases, infection, osteomyelitis. Osteomyelitis. Which is, by the way, the infection of the bone. Of the bone. Mm -hmm. And a variety of congenital diseases. Yeah, there's a lot of congenital diseases. What is cool about bone is that, and this is also mentioned in the paper, that about 10% of the bone is remodeled every year. So the osteoblasts, they form the new bone and the osteoclasts, they resorb the bone. Yeah, because the osteoclasts can also be seen as cleaning cells. They're not yeah. only like, they're not killing the bone. Yes. They're like removing what is removing. not necessary and making room for something else exactly. which is more important to grow. Yeah, but it's cool that for example, if we don't do sports, if we don't use the muscles and the bones, then the osteoclasts grow faster than the osteoblasts and in the end you have a weaker Bone. So that's why do, doing sports is so important. Right. All this happens, which is great, but if the defect is too large, usually... Then uh, our cells cannot uh, heal. Yep, like if case. you completely break a bone, yes. like completely separated, or if the, the defect is way too large, it wouldn't then work. it won't work. This is why we need other measures. Yes. We need grass. <laughs> we need something which uh, can bridge the gap between the two parts of the bones which are disconnected. There are many possibilities. We can use autologous bone grafts, which come from our own tissue, our own body, and they produce no rejection as the maximum biological potential with the strongest bone induction and the effect is also the most satisfactory. But the problem with autologous bone grafts is that they require two operations basically for the same person because the same person is the one who is giving the graft and receiving the graft. So the surgeon has to basically open a different site in the body, remove yeah. the graft from there and then implement it in a different place. And this can cause complications especially if the person is you know, has a jeopardized health condition yeah. already. Therefore... Therefore, we also have allo grafts. They are from um, another person, so it's a healthy bond from the donor's body. The problem is uh, that uh, there is a risk of disease transmission, so it's less commonly used uh, clinically. And finally... Yes! Da -da -da -da! As a solution. <laughs> people came up with other synthetic materials as grafting materials. This includes metals and bioceramics because they are readily available, they're cheaper, they don't jeopardize the health condition of the person experiencing the operation, and you don't need a donor. And with it, you reduce the risk of contamination. Assuming we have a fracture today, okay? You are. Which I do. And assuming that I get a bone graft. What happens first is that the mesenchymal cells are activated and they migrate to the site of the fracture, to the site of the implantation. Those mesenchymal cells then adhere to the matrix and differentiate through what we call mitosis, proliferation, and they form cartilage first. And then the cartilage mineralizes with the vascular invasion. A lot of veins basically migrate in to deliver the nutrients and the oxygen needed to the site. The osteoblasts then differentiate to form and secrete bone matrix. And finally, this bone matrix mineralizes and bone marrow is formed. Obviously, it takes two weeks, sometimes more. You end up with a bone tissue, similar to the native bone tissue. It takes much longer for the density of this bone tissue to increase, yeah. for the site to be strong enough for you to use it as before. <clears throat> An alternative to this method is taking that scaffold and processing it in the lab first before implanting it in your body. We extract some bone marrow from your body and the cells we need. We isolate those and clean them in a complicated process. And then we implant them on the surface of the scaffold. 
We put them in a very controlled environment for them to proliferate and grow. Mm -hmm. So we culture them and then we place it in your body. So presumably you're supposed to have a better chances of healing if you do that. Yeah. That's it for today. For today. Thank you for watching. Comment below if anything was not clear. If you feel like we need to elaborate on a certain point which was not discussed long enough. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're interested in something specific about bones, we also want you to write that down in the comments below. And we're going to make sure to discuss it next time yes. in a separate video. Yeah, thank you so much. Stay tuned. Ciao, ciao. Ciao.